Tonight is November the 8th, 2018, and what I'm going to attempt tonight is to evaluate, actually, this device right here, this uh, Mastec, I guess that's how you say it, MS5308 LCR tester, and I'm going to compare it to this magnificent old General Radio ZY Bridge. I've used this thing and shown it in my videos before. Absolutely magnificent device. And I'm going to see if the two compare not just at exactly what the transformer um, is supposed to be from 8 ohms, in this case to 5,000 ohms, but what it does at the extremes uh, where the um, load impedance right here goes to 4 ohms and even 2 ohms maybe and also goes higher from 8 ohms to maybe 16 ohms and 32 ohms whatever I have this little transformer beautiful little device trying to disturb it as least as I can this is a Western Electric uh, as you can see 5000 ohm primary on the left side to uh, 4, 8, 16, 150, and 600 ohms on the right side. I have three of these beauties. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to use this one right here, which is uh, 3,500 ohms primary to 8 ohms over here at 100 watts. And these higher impedances at 250 watts. And then this pretty little uh, James transformer, which is a uh, 8K primary to 4, 8, and 16. I'm I, my objective is two things tonight. One is to see if this device, which I trust, will actually give me the same numbers as this device. I guess I should say it the other way around. Will this device, this new digital device, I have not done this experiment before. So you're going to see what I see. Will this device give me the same numbers at the extremes as this one does? I trust this one. If this one says it's true, I believe it. If this one will agree with it, I will be ecstatic. Because this one is so simple to use, you won't believe it. You can put any load you want on the secondary and you can see what the reflected impedance is on the primary and it is not linear what that means is that if you have a 5k primary and a 8 ohm secondary and you change the secondary load to 16 ohms the primary reflected impedance is not 10k or if you change it from 8 ohms to 4 ohms the reflected primary impedance is not 2.5k it's close but it's off somewhere between 10 and 25 percent it's actually a second degree equation. We won't get into that too deep right now, but let's first evaluate this guy and see if he can tell us what this one says. Okay. What I'm going to do is document it right here, the impedances of this uh, GR bridge. I know that sometimes it's really hard to, for the camera to focus on this stuff, but I think you can see that okay. We're going to put the uh, data from the GR bridge here and the data from the uh, Mastec here at different uh, load impedances here on the secondary and we're going to see what the primary is. Here's a beautiful little, uh, who makes this thing, I think General Radio does, compensated uh, decade resistor box, I, you know, GR, and I have checked it, it is accurate within fractions of an ohm. I've actually got it set right now to 8 ohms. See this is steps of 10 so I can go 10 through 100 ohms. I can go 1 through 8 ohms and I can go a fraction from 0 to 1 ohm. So I've got it set on 8.0 ohms. Okay now what we have to do with this magnificent little device is first we set it up in balance and we do we adjust this knob and this knob until we balance the uh, the bridge. As I turn these two right here, if you can see all this happening at once, and you watch this one over here, we can crank up the gain to wherever we want it, and we balance the bridge by, if, you, if you're watching this one right here, as, as I 
is I turn these two. I'm just going to go back and forth turning these two. We get this to a minimum. We dip it in ham radio terms. Okay? And then we switch it over to measure. You can see it's completely off the scale. So we turn down the gain a little bit. And then we turn these two right here. This one and this one. This is G and this is B. This is um, conductance. This is admittance until we get a dip again. As you can see, if you can see that meter right there. We can do this into the little FFT device, but this is the way they did it in the old days, and it works. And then we take the numbers off of here, which happens to be 200 and just below, I would say, 50. You have to read these things very carefully because they're quite accurate. I'd call that uh, oh, maybe like 48 and then we put those numbers in over here see I put in 200 and I put in minus 43 well I read it as 43 a while ago what did I read it as this time not 48 it just you know in this case it's a little bit different 48 well you can call it either one this is a mechanical device but this is what I put it in for a while ago let's put in minus 48 minus 48 and our polar value right here this is R and X but our polar value which is what we're really interested in is 4861.93 that's ridiculous right that's 5,000 ohms that's a five that says we have a 5k primary which is what the transformer says it is a 5k primary this is Close enough to 5,000 that you call it 5,000. 4861. So we write that down over here. 4861 for 8 ohms. Not exactly sure how I'm going to record it. But I wanted to show you this uh, introduction to it so that you'll see where I'm going with it. Now, the next thing we're going to do if we're going to measure the same value without changing anything, without changing anything over here, we're just going to hook up this device to it. Well, I think I can actually do that real time. Hopefully, and without too much glare. There's always a, always a lot of glare. Damn the glare. Okay, let's see. I'm going to remove these two. I'm going to hook this up right here. And then we're going to go to... Uh, our series. Oh, I sure hope this works. I hope sure. I hope I can document it. Our series now. See, we're at LS right now. The series inductance. We don't want that. We want uh, series resistance. See, it says it's 4.575K. I hope you can see that really good. 4758. Let's write that down. 47.58 so our fancy little new 2018 device said it was 47.58 our old 1940s device said it was 48.61 that's the same number gentlemen this is beautiful now I can't show you every step I make here because the, the video would probably be three or four hours long but I'm going to start making some more videos, and along the way, I'll show you what I'm getting. And again, the purpose is twofold. One is to see if this device will really tell us the truth. This one, I believe in. This one is telling us the truth. So I'm going to be changing this load resistance from 8 to 16 to 4 to whatever kind of a number in here and recording the numbers and doing the same over here and I'll be back in just a second and I'll show you what I've got well here is some absolutely stunning and wonderful news in my opinion gotta be able to see this okay I redrew it so that I can explain it a little bit better what I'm doing is I'm measuring the impedance of the primary. This is a 5K primary to a 4, 8, 16, 150, and 600 ohm secondary. 
as I showed you earlier in the movie, in, in, the, in the first clip. Right here, it is. So you can see exactly what it is. And what I'm doing is I'm selecting the 8 ohm tap. The 5,000 ohm, the one on the left side, is what I'm measuring. And I measure what its impedance is by putting different values, 4, 8, and 16 ohm, just the 8 ohm tap. You can hear my device here about to, about to power off. That's okay. So what I've done is I've put 4, 8, and 16 ohms on it. Now, in a perfect mathematical world, at 8 ohms, if it was 5,000, if at 4 ohms, it'd be 2,500, and at 16 ohms, it'd be 10,000. Well, it's not quite like that, but it's close. Um, that's not what we're going to get into right at the moment. I, I'll, I'll try to explain that a little bit here in just a second. But what my objective was right now was to compare this device, which as I state once again, I trust with this little new digital device. These things, I bought it out on uh, eBay and they range from a little over $200 to this one. I think I paid $133 for this one. I am extremely pleased with this. This is going to make my life so much simple, simpler. It's unfortunately not as, mu not as much fun as this one, if that makes any sense. But anyway, my 5,000 ohm, if I put 8 ohms on the 8 ohm tap with the GR instrument, I get 4861, and with a little digital instrument here, the Mass Tech, I get 4758. That's 2% difference. For all practical purposes, that's the right answer. Both of them are the right answer. If I put 4 ohms, I get 2832 and 2956, which is a 4% error. 4% not error, but 4% difference. And if I go to six, 16 ohms, it rises to 8652 and 8899, which is another 2% difference between these two. I mean, even at, at normal values, where they should come out theoretically exactly the same, there's 2% difference, which I find very amazing. What else I have found out that I'm not going to try to demonstrate, because it would just be so long, is... The further you go away from what the rated impedance is, like go to 4 ohms and 2 ohms and 1 ohm, or you go from 16 ohms to 20 ohms to 32 ohms to 50 ohms, the error gets worse and worse. I don't know if the difference between these two get worse and worse, but the ratio gets worse and worse, meaning that if you Theoretically, if you mathematically changed this from 8 ohms to 1 ohm, then this would go from 5K. I think I just did that one right here. It would go from 5K. It would go from 5, whoops, 5,000 uh, to 8. It would go to 625 ohms. Well, it won't go there. It's actually a bit higher than that. And if you go, say, from uh, 8 ohms to... 80 ohms, uh, eight or uh, 5,000, 5,000, darn, excuse me, 5,000, from 8 to 80, it'd be a factor of a 10. That would be 50,000 ohms. It doesn't go to 50,000 ohms. It's a parabolic curve, it's a second degree equation. It, it curves like this. I'm not going to try to get down into the nitty gritty data. I have been doing this to the point of insanity. And uh, so the point is, is something I've learned just from, from tinkering is you can, you, can, you can cheat your transformer if that's the way you want to look at it. Say in this case right here, this is a good one. You got 3,500 ohms here and 8 ohms here at 100 watts. These higher impedance ones gives you 250 watts. This is a, this is a really solid little transformer. But if I change this 8 ohms to 4 ohms, I'm going to get about half that. And if I change this to, this 8 ohms to 16 ohms, I'm going to get about double that. Pretty darn close. Within within this range right here. I've been doing this on several transformers today. Here's a beautiful little. Uh, 
James transformer, as you can see, it performs essentially the same way. If you start varying the load on the secondary, the primary will respond in a way very similar to this. That even includes, where in the world did I put it? Oh my, now I've lost my transformer. I have another one around here. The big guy. Where on earth did it go? I couldn't have lost that thing. It's about as big as I am. This guy right here. I found out that I can match just about anything I want from this side. This is the primary plate, center tap plate to 8 ohms. I've, I learned it all by hooking by a crook, just by complete experimentation where to put the 8 ohm tap, but I can get a 4 to 8 ohm tap out of this to just about anything I want over here. So I hope this is making sense. What I'm, like I say, the, the two objectives is, is, is this magnificent old device and this new little fangled device agree for all practical purposes, so I trust this guy now. I will continue to test it and always keep it in my mind that, well, you know, can I continue to test it? It has to be proven to me over a very long period of time. But uh, <clears throat> the, the secondary objective of this little video is to show you that you have some options in your transformers, at least to a ratio of two to one up above and down below the rated impedance of the secondary to affect reflected impedance back to the primary of your tube. Once you start going past a ratio of two to one, uh, things get a little strange and it's not linear. So without repeating myself, I think you see what I mean. It, it, it's, a, it's a parabolic curve. And I did put it into a uh, least squares curve fitting program and it comes out with some really strange numbers that I don't want to bore you with. But that's what it is for audio transformers. I hope this makes sense. I hope it's worth something. I intend to make a video on um, some power transformers and power supplies. Not that I know so much about them. But I do love to experiment and share this with uh, you guys and get your response to it. I learned as much as from you guys as you do from me, as, as I say so many times. And I enjoy using this equipment, and I'm just uh, very, very pleased that the modern-day equipment is giving me answers that, uh, that I really trust. So thanks for watching. Uh, constructive comments are always welcomed, and uh, stay safe.